The Los Angeles Lakers are finally back to full strength, and it's legitimately terrifying. Nothing is more intimidating than the fact that AD's changed the narrative about his injury-prone nature, playing through some setbacks as of late. Knock on wood, this is the healthiest, most agile, and decisively elusive version of Davis we've witnessed over the last three years. The combination of brute force, finesse, and springy two-way impact from Anthony Davis is officially resembling its prime self again. To make a statement early on in a second half where they went on to dominate, this turned Chicago sideline out of bounds type action triggered by deloading, see some get it back from Reeves, receive the big body from AD, draw two defenders on the drive and instinctively find Davis for the lob. From SLOBs like that, to executed half-court screen the screener actions with an on-ball taking place simultaneously, which gets D'Lo the wide open corner triple, the Lakers offense is more exquisite than you'd think. Darvin Ham only receives flack from the fans and media for the clipboard with nothing on it meme or when he was doodling on his clipboard, but with every puzzle piece back intact, and with the lefty Steph D'Angelo Russell being able to space the floor out, Look for Darwin to keep this system running swiftly. Stay tuned for more play sets that are looking smooth as hell, but first a breakdown of both the legit and fraudulent narratives sweeping through the biggest market across the NBA. Right quick, just 9.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe. Also hit thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. We have to kick off this video by taking the time to recognize how incredible it is that 18-year-old Bronny James just dropped five threes in the All-American game, while his 38-year-old Pops in LeBron resembled the early-year Cavalier version of himself at the United Center. James was a game third best plus 23 in LA's W up in Chi-Town, racking up 25 points, 7 boards, 4 dimes, and 2 steals on 60% true shooting. The year 20 is an absolute physical specimen that we should all appreciate witnessing while we can. Defensively, this late shot clock to Rosen Iso sees D'Lo stay with Debo's drive into his jab step and spin move, working to funnel the pressure of Debo into the rim protection of AD. We've kept an eye on this next stat in my last couple Laker videos, but as of this recording, their defensive rating maintains itself as the best among all playoff teams, just ahead of my hometown Raptors. The biggest narrative right now surrounding the Lakers, though, has been the amount of free throws they're getting. The Lakers rank number one by far in total attempts from the charity stripe this season by 218, the most of any team since the 2018-19 campaign. Given how wide of a gap that is between LA and any other team, Maybe the slightest bit of that comes down to the natural bias of the officials refing a large market, however, the fire from the people saying that it's rigged because of that can be quickly stomped out when you take in the playoff-bound Sacramento Kings, who receive the smallest amount of attention of any successful team, ranked number two in total free throws attempted. So the large market bias narrative is a thinly veiled one. But ultimately, it's only casuals claiming the Lakers have the refs on their side. Due to the slashing of Anthony Davis and LeBron James, combined with the niftiest foul-drawing merchant we've seen in nearly half a decade in Hillbilly Kobe, that's the real reason why this team gets to the line so much. With that smoke cleared, LeBron would comment on Austin Powers Reeves hitting the too small celly on the very man who invented it in Patrick Beverly. Austin recently said that his favorite player growing up was Kobe instead of LeBron. King James would respond to that after the W in Chicago, saying, AR always got my back, even though he loved Kobe back in the day more than me. I forgive him. Anthony Davis playing like himself has been a sight to behold over the last few outings, especially how he went to work in Chi-Town. AD's fluid movement was extremely evident as he was using his insane handle off the dribble for a big man to hop step into the lane and beast over his matchup. Returning to his hometown with vibe enhancing style points, AD had another monster showing, this time which worked to exact revenge on a Chicago team that stomped them on their home court a few days earlier. Davis would post 38 points, 10 boards, 
four dimes, and a couple of steals and blocks on 72% true shooting. This is a Laker ball club that knows it has to build off every vibe advantage that it gets. In other words, they don't mess around and are looking to get their business done, which means getting LeBron a fifth career championship ring and a second one for Anthony Davis is all that matters. The lack of ego combined with the tunnel vision mentality from James and Davis has contributed to keeping the vibes at a premium status quo. The successful second half of the home and home against Chicago can primarily be attributed to D'Angelo Russell returning to the lineup after he'd been out for the last two games dealing with a bad hip. Despite only putting up 17 points, D'Lo outscored the Bulls by 35 when he was on the court. There's a ton of comfortable positives we could keep raving about, but fact of the matter here is, if the Lakers lose their edge, they're kind of screwed. Merely a loss or three could result in this team finding themselves out of the play-in in the definitively wild, wild west. This weak side elbow screen and roll sees Davis get just a piece of Levine and D'Lo show off his in-between game with the step back fade from 16. This three-level playmaking assassin chef archetype then shows off the third level of his offensive bag, this time taking Chicago's best defender on in the paw, Patty Williams, schooling him by hitting him with a cross into a quick hezzy and step back. This next isolation displays both the noteworthy Laker floor spacing and the smoothness of the brow, who draws the gravity of Nicola with an up fake on the drive, elusively first steps like he's gonna attack before leaning back for the patented short midi. This set earlier on in the game displays the resumed chemistry from James and Davis. James sets the weak side on ball for Davis, then directly slips out after the ghost screen, getting Davis the clear lane to work over the mismatch in the bald mamba. Going back to deloading though, and his production has been evidently insane since becoming a Laker. This man's averaging 19 points on both an above average 48% shooting from the field and 40% from three. What a trade robbery to say the very least from Rob Polinka to receive D'Lo for Westbrook in a three-team deal with Minnesota and Utah. Displaying how much of a steal that D'Lo really is, the Lakers offensive rating before the trade was an NBA 22nd best 114, where with D'Lo, they own an NBA 5th best 117.5 offensive rating. I can't stress enough how much this man opens up everything for this system to flow at its finest. He's an underrated defender as well. Two commenter shoutouts next time for my last upload and this one, but over their final six games, next of which features D'Angelo Russell making his homecoming to Minnesota against a damn tough Wolves team, what'll be the Lakers' record?